just use the mic, sorry, Mike. Gareth, just, I mean, before the reaction to the, the drama at the end, just on John Stones, what, what was the injury itself? Um, how is he and, and whether beforehand it was at all a risk playing him in the two matches? Um, well, no. Um, he, the first game, we, we measure everything and the first game for him wasn't a game that was a high level uh, in terms of the intensity. Um, we've done exactly what uh, Holland did with Virgil van Dijk tonight, um, what Norway did with Erling Haaland and Odegaard starting them again. Uh, Holland also started Aki again, so it only ever seems to fall on us when there's a question around that. Um, of course, we're disappointed um, if he's got a problem. Um, it, it seems to be in the sort of adductor area, so yeah, we'll just have to see. I mean, John also came in on the back of not having played for two weeks, so it's not that it's a, an overload situation. Um, but I hate sending players back to their clubs if they're not fully fit, of course. Next, just on really on, on the uh, at the end as well. Your 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 emotions at you know those final seconds, um, and and just in general, Jude. I mean, he had chances through the game as well, and he was a real creative force for you. Yeah, I thought there were lots of good creative performances. Really, um, I thought Jared Bowen had an excellent game. Uh, I thought Ivan was very very good. I thought. We managed to get Phil into the game the longer it went on. You know, in the first half, the space for him on the left was blocked a bit. Actually, Jude was drifting out there and there wasn't the space for Phil. But when, when we freed that up a bit after half time, he managed to find that space and really um, had a good impact on the game. Uh, I thought James Madison had a good impact when he came on. You know, all of the changes, all the players that came on had a, had a good impact. So, uh, and obviously, Cobby. Um, from a creative aspect as well, gave us something completely different. So, yeah, Jude, of course, is the headline and um, that um, competitive spirit, that desire not to lose, um, desire to win, um, in the end was decisive in getting the late goal. But I thought the whole team showed that throughout the game and um, recovered from setbacks with a pretty inexperienced team really against a team that have got some very very good players um, so very pleased with a lot of what I saw tonight Gareth there have been a handful of setbacks over the last couple of games but there have also been some surprising players who maybe who have stepped up and who have nailed the colours to the mass um, uh, how many players do you feel of your available 30, 40, 50, 60 who you're considering at present uh, how many do you feel are, are ready for the challenge of winning the, uh, the European Championships I'd have to sit and go through it all because I'm a, bit, a little bit lost as to <laughs> who we've got and who we haven't really. So um, the great thing is definitely some players have emerged positively from the opportunities they've had. And so, you know, we've perhaps got more depth um, in, in one respect, but the injuries are a concern. And um, yeah, we, we've got so many players missing at the moment and we've still got the real heat of the season to come. So the intensity of the games, the what's resting on the games, um, we're not going to know what, what we're left with until right until the end. Um, but we'll just have to make the best decisions that we possibly can. Hi, Gareth. Uh, do, do you feel after these two games that you're, you're closer to knowing you're, you're 23? And can I just ask a question about Marcus Rashford? And obviously, do, he, he didn't come on tonight. Was, was that just a tactical uh, your choice, or was, is he injured? Or um, so, in terms of knowing the 23, it's, I suppose refer to the previous answer a little bit. In that, there's so many unknowns at the moment in terms of who might be available. Um, so, yes, these performances were very important for players to be able to see whether or not they could play against high-level opposition. But equally, what the way that they play between now and the end of the season with their club in big matches is going to have a high tariff for us as well. So we will track all of that. No, I wanted to see Anthony Gordon again. I thought he had an excellent impact on the first game. Um, and I thought that Madison coming into that area could open things up for us a bit. OK, 
Okay, any other questions? Two here, so then Simon. Gareth, I know we touched on this last time, but do, do you think Jude's going to get the protection from referees that he needs? Because he, he seems to spend quite a lot of time on the pitch quite upset about decisions going against him. Um, yeah, I'd have to watch the game back to, to see the challenges tonight, clearly. I mean, definitely on Saturday, the, um, a competitive game would have been refereed differently. So um, I'm, not, I'm not quite as clear on that in my head today. Um, but... Yeah, look, he's a good player. We've got players that want to get on the ball in tight areas of the pitch and there, there's going to be contact. You've, if you're a top player, you're, you're going to have to live with that. Um, and I do think in, in tournament situations, qualifying situations, games are definitely refereed much, much more tightly. Gareth, just two, if I may. Um, one, what did you make of the way that Cobby did in a, in a midfield three with Declan Rice and Jude Bellingham first? Well, his attributes are there for everybody to see that um, ability to receive under pressure and uh, ride challenges, um, to manipulate the ball in tight areas. Um, we were a little bit more open. There's no, there's no doubt about that. You know, it's, uh, it's, um, yeah, we wanted to press aggressively, and um, there were times where we turned the ball over on there. It, in, on the edge of their penalty box and we actually had chances that we should have taken. The flip side of that was we had a little bit of a problem with Mangala pulling wide and Tielemans in the, in the area that meant that if, you know, as, when our centre-backs went in there, we were leaving Lukaku one against one and, you know, we struggled with that a little bit. So um, there were things to think about within that. The, he gives us a, a different profile of midfield player to anything else we've got. Um, and... We're really pleased with what he's done. You know, he's he's um, he's adapted and adjusted brilliantly. You 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 can't believe his age really that he's just um, taking it all in his stride as he has. And, and just, it's probably going to be the last time we see you until the, the provisional squad announcement. What's that going to look like? No offence, but I hope that is the case. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Um, <laughs> um, how many players are you likely to be calling up for that? I mean, how's that going to look? Mm -hmm. And. This is the first time you've had to whittle it down to 23 players for a few tournaments. How many extra headaches does that provide, given all the other issues you're dealing mm. with? Yeah, it's going to be complicated um, because, firstly, the injury situations that we have, um, you know, some will be back playing at the weekend, some will be back playing in a couple of weeks, some will be really close to the end of the season. Um, then we're going to have the European finals, the FA Cup final and the two friendlies that we've got ourselves. So we're, we're, uh, it's inevitable we're going to be naming a longer squad, which is what we did before the um, Euros here, even though we were dealing with 26 then. Um, yeah, w w we really don't know because there are so many questions on, on the injuries at the moment. Um, but we've we've gained valuable information about so many players this this week and and I have to say you know Saturday's performance I was very pleased with bar the transitions and the final third play today I thought our final third play was very good uh, it was just the finish that wasn't always there um, but in both games the transitions have been a bit of a problem and um, defensively we haven't been as solid in our penalty around our penalty area as we would like to be um, but we've been brave with our press and, you know, it's uh, at times you, you reap the rewards for that and at times you live, uh, you live on, this, uh, on the edge a little bit with it. OK, we've got three questions queued up. Start with James here. Hi, Gareth. Just, just on Cobby again. Um, there's going to be a lot of clamour for him to go now, given how he played tonight. What's the message you sort of send him away with? And, and are you confident that he can sort of shut out that noise and just keep doing what he's doing? Yeah, well, I think... Um, Firstly, he seems very mature, uh, very calm. Um, he knows he's making his way. Um, we're absolutely delighted with what he's done, first and foremost. So, um, yeah, and then there's a, there's a lot of the season still to be played with his club. So uh, it's pointless me. Uh, you know, I had plan, a plan on uh, Saturday night for Tuesday that got blown apart um, in 12 hours so 
to have a plan for something in two and a half months' time at the moment is faintly ridiculous. We know, we know uh, some of the core parts of that. We know who's been able to play at that level, who our very best players are. And the rest, we've got a lot clearer picture of what people are capable of from, from the two games that we've played. And we're just going to see how people are when they come back into form, um, whether they can do that fitness-wise with their clubs. Um, Gareth, you mentioned um, it was a very open game and the attack, your attacking resources are very impressive. Uh, but defensive errors are still creeping in. Uh, do, do, you have, do you feel you have the defensive depth to, to match what we can do up front? Well, look, we kn we've known, we've had a consistent defence because of the qualities that they have. And, um, you know, that's always been apparent to us. We needed to test um, the other guys against high-level opponents. And um, we've been able to do that in the two games. So that allows us to go away, it allows them to think about how they've played. Um, and, um, you know, you to, to win a tournament, you've got to defend really well as a team, not just the back four, but the, the whole team. So um, we definitely gave up more chances than we have, or better quality chances than we have done for, for a while. But we have also played two, two top-level teams, and that's the reality of, of those games as well. OK, last question. Um, as you said, I thought Bowen played really well tonight, but as a left-footed player out on the right-hand side, that's a space normally occupied by Bakayo Saka. Is it an outright competition between them two for that place in the summer? And how do you manage to inform players going for the same position? Well, we'd take two. <laughs> so, um, I mean, there are other wide players, of course, but um, what we saw from Phil tonight, what we saw from uh, Jared, what I've seen from Anthony Gordon in the two games, uh, what we know that Bukayo brings, that's, um, that, that's at the forefront of my mind in terms of Bowen and Gordon over the last two games. They've been the two that we knew the least about, if you like, and I think they've come through really strongly. Um, both their, their work, their threat on the goal, their uh, speed, the fact they want to run in behind. Um, I think both have produced quality performances and both have worked unbelievably hard for the team and in the big matches you, you have to have all those aspects okay we'll end it there thank you very much thank you